Thank you, Chair. Thank you for inviting me to join this important webinar today. Um, as we've mentioned, it's not news to anyone working in the maritime industry that COVID-19 pandemic has caused a magnitude of serious issues for seafarers at sea, um, those ashore and those in transit, both to home, ship and home. But I believe the experiences at ISWAN are illustrative of these real challenges um, seafarers are facing and why it's important everything is done to facilitate crew changes and meet seafarers' essential needs. Um, at ice One, we've been supporting seafarers affected by the pandemic since the beginning of the year through our free multilingual and confidential 24-hour helpline Seafarer Help um, and our regional programme in the Philippines, India and Nigeria. The impact on seafarers has been so great that Seafarer Help saw a threefold increase in the number of cases during the peak of the pandemic. From the beginning of the pandemic, Seafarer Help has received nearly 2,500 reports from seafarers who have COVID-related concerns. Over a quarter of these cases have been about repatriation challenges, and Iceland's regional team in India has separately assisted over 5,000 Indian seafarers facing repatriation difficulties from various locations around the world. Nearly 1,400 cases have related to financial difficulties, the vast majority from seafarers struck, stuck at home and able to join the vessel as planned. The emergency funds that we administer have collectively paid out close to £200,000 in grants to seafarers adversely affected by the pandemic and have been used to assist thousands of seafarers stranded in Manila as well as seafarers and their families who needed urgent relief in other regions. Although the challenges I've just briefly mentioned highlight real difficulties for seafarers, there are examples of these are examples of cases where ICE One and other maritime charities and seafarers unions have been able to provide support. There are, however, many examples that do not have happy endings, and sadly, we have dealt with cases where seafarers have taken their own lives during this time. There have also been multiple reports of seafarers' suicide in the media. For the first time in Seafarer Help's existence, direct, direct reports of stress, depression and anxiety have entered into our top five reported problems from seafarers, worried about when they'll be able to return home to their families or how they'll continue to work through this exhaustion. Others have found themselves unemployed and unable to support their families. We've also received reports of entire crews suffering from extremely low morale. Even without a global crisis, seafarers may be more likely to experience poor mental health than the wider population. Recent studies show that, the higher num that higher numbers appear to suffer from depression than other working groups, and that determinants of mental health disorders among seafarers include work environmental factors, job satisfaction and self-rated health. Connectivity issues at sea and working far from home can mean that access to support and confidential healthcare can be a major challenge to seafarers. So it's not surprising that the added pressure and complications of COVID-19 on top of existing difficulties has had disastrous consequences for seafarers. It's therefore essential that we overcome the pandemic related challenges and also work to improve substandard practices and conditions present before its outbreak. Despite the hardship caused by COVID-19, there are some valuable lessons that will hopefully accelerate much needed improvements to the lives of seafarers. It became clear in the early stages of the outbreak that effective communication between company personnel ashore and seafarers is essential. A great cause of anxiety for many at sea in the beginning was the feeling they'd been forgotten about or that companies weren't being transparent. Hopefully many companies have been able to improve their communication from shore to ship as a result. At ice One, we've been encouraged by the number of companies who have approached our teams for assistance in strengthening their mental health resources and support. There is real cause and opportunity here for companies to review their mental health policies and procedures and to put due protections in place. Access to good quality internet and opportunity to contact home continues to be recognised as a basic need. And we have seen many companies improve availability of internet on board. Strong partnership working among ship operators, unions, welfare organisations and government agencies must continue for the benefit of seafarers and the industry as a whole. The importance of shore leave has been stressed by a number of seafarers welfare organisations 
for years alongside the opportunity for real rest and enjoyable activities in an environment which is both a workplace and a home. We must ensure that this is prioritised alongside successful crew changes. Finally, during this period, there has been a very positive response from seafarers, ship operators, government agencies and PI clubs to our Social Interaction Matters project, with a strong recognition that connecting with others is essential for good mental wellbeing, and with the pressures of extended time on board, this is important now more than ever. It's vital this focus on crew cohesion continues beyond the pandemic. Thank you very much.